Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. This is the removal of a yellow jacket colony that made its nest in the ceiling of a client's house up inside the attic where it was 105 degrees. I'm also going to be showing you guys the developmental stages of the larva as they're going through the metamorphosis state with inside cap cells. And I'll be simulating how adult wasp feeds a larva and showing you a close up of how the larva actually eats solid food, which is pretty awesome. So let's get into the removal. Check it out. All right, so this colony had its entranceway at the roof line where the soffit and the siding met. And with, typically with any of my removals, I have to start with vacuuming out right at the entranceway and trying to get as many of the foragers as I possibly can. Um, and that just negates there being a massive swarm inside the house or inside the attic once I start removing the nest. So I decided just to duct tape the nozzle of the vacuum kind of in the, the busiest traffic spot and while I make my way into the attic to investigate where the nest was. Unless the vacuum is going out there. So as it was like 90 degrees outside, it was like 105 degrees in this attic. And I mean, just absolutely on proper fire inside that suit. It may not seem like a lot. I mean, I love the heat, but inside that suit, it is just unbearably hot. See part of it. Let's see if I can zoom in. Well, it's underneath that insulation somewhere. I see some of it up top here. If you look in between those two, where the 45 is. Not 45, 30 maybe. Back in there. Oh, it's hot up here. All right, so here's the nest. And this thing was bigger than a basketball. It was probably about two feet wide, uh, where you can't really see because it, it goes two feet back. You guys and the sound it's about probably 20 inches tall and so trying to remove this thing out I didn't want to just go and just start pulling it out because there were a lot of adults inside this nest there was probably a couple thousand at least and um, I didn't want them flying all around me it was it was hot enough in there to begin with plus then if you have a swarm going I mean I felt like heat stroke was setting in and that kind of like level of excitement and panic and adrenaline is really not good health-wise. So I just wanted to try to keep as much of the activity down as I possibly could. So breaking through the, the envelope wall with my vacuum and sucking up some of the envelope while then exposing the comb, I was able to really um, kind of focus in on where the adults were going to come pouring out from. Um, so if you give them an opening to come out, that's where they're going to come out from instead of uh, just start tearing into random spots in the envelope. So just taking my time, letting them kind of regroup into the uh, in between the comb layers and then hitting them again with the vacuum and sucking them up. Now any of the adults that did fly out of there, I had my black flag misting spray with me for the flying insects and I was spraying that outside the comb because I did want to feed this to the girls so I didn't want there to be any contamination of the black fly on the comb. So any shots that you happen to see of the, the black flag spraying past the lens, it's not getting on the nest. I actually didn't spray the nest at all. Um, it's just kind of spraying in front of the lens so it looks like it's going that direction. Um, so there, I mean, there were a lot in this nest. So I had vacuumed outside for probably about 40 minutes while I investigated the actual size of the nest from inside. And um, so that really decreased the numbers that were coming in from, or coming, yeah, coming in from outside and, uh, and then causing there to be a potential massive swarm inside the attic. You will notice that some of them, as they fly into the attic, since it was so hot, they kind of start like squirming around on the ground. They really don't last very long in that high heat inside the attic space. Um, so this envelope acts like a really good insulator for them. They're able to keep the nest cool by directing breeze into the, the, the comb layers themselves 
from outside by bat batting their wings. Um, yeah, unfortunately, my light on my camera died right before uh, I was able to pull this out, and then actually the camera itself died right before I pulled the comb out of the, out of the hole. Uh, so that was kind of disappointing, but um, I did get the shots of the comb at, when I got the thing home, so um, you're able to see the uh, part of the comb anyway as I start vacuuming them off. And it actually kind of worked out pretty well because once the the light died, they they really go towards the light when they can um, if they see an opening to their nest. Um, so I was able to kind of like focus the flashlight in certain areas so they would fly to like the wall instead of directly to me or directly to the camera. And um, then I could just vacuum them up right away. But that's a lot of layer of comb right there. And there was a lot of larva inside that um, that actually split apart for the girls to, uh, to enjoy at different, uh, different days after this removal. In the bag that people are going to ask, inside that um, that plastic or that inside that uh, cloth bag was actually a bald-faced hornet nest that I relocated, and um, so it was actually I think there was three removals this day. So this is just the top part of the comb. The other part of the comb I'd already fed to the girls as soon as I got home, and um, but this I wanted to kind of tear it apart and uh, get into the the larva layers and things. Um, so this is a little bit of tweezing. I didn't want to do too much of a tweezing video here. But I wanted just to show the, the, I mean, just the mass amount of larvae that were in this nest. Um, what you're seeing here is queen comb. And queen comb are just larger cells that they uh, build at the, towards the middle to late season. And what happens is the, the queen will then lay female eggs, which is all she lays, are fertilized eggs, and they, they become female um, wasps. So when they build the larger cells and the queen lays the female egg into that cell, there's enough room in there for the larva to expand bigger than a traditional worker wasp. Um, so as they get bigger, the hungrier they get and the more they demand for the workers to feed them food. And the workers cannot, it's almost like a crying baby to a, to a, a um, human mom. Like, Hearing that scraping noise, they it's it's incessant, and they feel like they have to feed them. So, the larger they get, the more they can develop, and it actually it surpasses the threshold of becoming just a regular worker, and then they eventually develop um, into queen wasps, which are able to reproduce um, and be mated with. And um, so, what you're seeing here are virtually all queen cells. Now. Female workers can lay eggs, and they, they lay um, what become males. Unfertilized wasps, which are workers, cannot lay fertilized eggs, obviously, because they can't mate. So their eggs develop into males. How human reproductives works is if you're not mated with, your egg doesn't develop into a human. Well, that doesn't work with these types of insects. Um, if they don't get mated with as a female, they will still develop an egg that will turn into an adult. Um, but they're, depending on whether or not they're mated with, affects the sex of the um, the adult wasp. So a female worker who cannot mate, who will have unfertilized eggs, those eggs will turn into male wasps. And the queens will, who can mate, will develop their eggs into female wasps. Now, again, the, the, the extension from that is the larger the cell that they lay their egg into and the more that it's fed, so the more nutrition it gets, determines whether or not it, be, it stays a worker or it becomes a queen or just a reproductive. So I know that's as clear as mud, but it's really hard to, uh, to convey that, especially in the comments when I try to explain that to people. Um, it's not it's not as cut and dry as oh if they mate with some uh, a male they they have babies that grow up and that's just that's a mammal thing that's not an insect thing. So pulling off some of the um, silk caps here, you're able to see the different stages of metamorphosis that these wasps are going through. Um, some of the cells have just re they just look like larvae, so they haven't really started their developmental stage yet um, or their metamorphosis. And then some of them, you open them up and they have legs or they have um, segmented abdominal sections. 
Um, they have differentiations in their, um, their, their different segments as far as their thorax and their head and their, um, and their abdomen. Some of them have the discoloration where their eyes are going to be. Um, larvas' faces are really strange because they, they look like that they have a head, but it's really more just their mandibles um, and no eyes. And their eyes Careful for the adult no will develop number. behind the larval head. It's really interesting looking and really interesting how that works. People ask, and if you see here where I'm pulling the, the caps off, sometimes the caps go down well into the cell. So as the larvae are developing and growing, they're built, they're weaving silk up inside that cell cavity. And then once it's, um, they're large enough, they, they, they cap it off the top. So this is not a bald-faced hornet. This is actually a, um, a cavity-building yellow jacket. So for whatever reason, this particular species, they develop, metamorphosize inside that cell black. And then eventually, their yellow appears. So this is not a bald-faced hornet. This is a cavity-building yellow jacket, which will become yellow and not white like the bald-faced hornet. So this is a pretty well advanced uh, larval state, and so it has legs, it has the, the compound eyes developing, and it has abdominal segments, and it also has a thorax. But it's still very, very soft. Matter of fact, this is actually softer than a larva. A larva is kind of tough when you, when you pick it up and stuff, but these guys are very, very soft and delicate, and that's why they're capped off inside the cells, because they can't sustain any sort of trauma or they will be they'll virtually fall apart so this larva here in the center here she is weaving her silk cap and the ones around her are getting ready to go into that state now these are going to be queens or adult males just depending on which, you can't really tell by looking at them if they're going to be males or queens. It's not until they're developed that you'll know whether or not that they're males or queens. In this video, you can really see the texture of the bodies of the larva. They're not. They're not wet and slimy like people think they are. They're not slimy at all. They're not even really wet. They're very dry. It almost feels like it almost feels like a plastic baggie that maybe has like jelly in it. Like they're soft and, and, and malleable, but their bodies are, are um, very smooth. And I mean, they're not gross really to pick up like people think they are. Um, and they can't bite you. I, I've put my finger right at their mandibles to show people that they can't bite. Um, and just feels like you're being tickled, like very, very, very light, almost like a feather brushing your skin. So there was a dead larva that was in the in the nest. So I just kind of picked that apart and was showing, wanted to show you guys how they eat. So I'm simulating being an adult wasp and feeding this larva chunk food. So it's primarily a liquid, but there is a bit of solids in there from like the the outside layer of the um, larva that it's eating. So you see here, there's. There's not just the mandibles, there's actually mouth parts that have developed underneath of their mandibles. And that is almost like, almost like in that alien movie, if you see like the two like um, horizontal mandibles underneath of the regular mandibles that are vertical, and they kind of usher the food into the mouth part. I really wish I could get a zoomed in part of the mouth parts. I get it as close as I can without it getting blurry. Um, but you really can't see how it's being absorbed into their body. But it's, oh my, it's just so interesting to see them chewing and eating. And, and um, I mean, this is, this is all they're about. It's almost like a human in a, in a sleeping bag, <laughs> you know, trying to eat like ice cream off their chest. But um, I, could, I could literally leave this go for an hour and that stuff, all that goop would be gone. Um, I have some shots of a queen feeding her larva, and this is what they would do. She would just glob it up and lay it like right on their on their bellies, and they would just sit there and just kind of like peck at it until it was completely gone. 
or until she came back and took it off of them and then fed that the rest of it to another larva. But you can see the the eyes here. They're not really eyes like the adult will have. They're they're kind of very simple eyes, and the eyes of the adult is going to develop behind the head of the larva. So this is the catch of the day, minus the envelope. I already pulled out the envelope and um, wanted to show just the, the mass amount of yellow jackets that were inside this, this vacuum, because people always ask to see what happens inside the vacuum. And it's really just water in there with a little bit of Dawn dish soap. They die very quickly after being sucked up. Once they're in this water, then I just dump out the water on my compost pile. But this this colony, I wanted to count how many were in there because there were so many adults inside this colony. So bringing it back home, I decided just to figure, well, I'll weigh the mass amount of them, and then I'll count out like 300 of them, and then weigh that, and then that would kind of give me an idea as to how many adults were in this colony. So the first thing I wanted to do is just get get the majority of the water and um, everything out of the, the shop vac bucket into a smaller bucket so I could take like a t-shirt and drape it over the opening of the bucket and then dump out all the water and just kind of strain it out. I was kind of hoping for a like a window screen so that way I could dump it out on that. That would have been a heck of a lot easier but I didn't have any available window screens that I wasn't already using for my house. <laughs> so. Just straining out all, all the water that I the most of the water that I could, um, and unfortunately this isn't like 100% foolproof and isn't super accurate by weighing them out because the moisture content it's going to affect how accurate your results are. So in this case I, I just weighed out as many as I could in a pile um, after counting them out to 300, and um, that would kind of give me a kind of a, a, a close guesstimation. Um, and just to show that I did count them all out, and I just sped this up. Um, this took a while. <laughs> I think this took like maybe 35 minutes to count out 300 of them. And it's just because you're you're using tweezers for one thing. Plus they're stuck together, and there's other crap in there, not just not just the adults. Um, but it still, it gave me an idea as to okay, if I have this this amount of ounces of adults. Um, give or take, you know, envelope and everything else, um, that would give me a, a rough idea as to how many were in the nest. So that's 300. And that's what's left. So there is, oh god, there's about a thousand here probably, total. And that was just the amount that I had sucked up in the vacuum. And I'm done counting. <laughs> Get ahead of me. Oh, Tiggers, you're gonna join the fun too. Hi, Tiggers. Here we go. I think right here. And these are obviously all retro shots of the girls since Angel has passed away uh, about five or six months ago. Um, but luckily I still have footage of her and being with the girls and um, obviously Tiggers as well. Um, so it's nice to kind of look back on these um, removals from mid-2019 uh, when all the three girls were together. And uh, I mean, Pigeon and Ginger are still, still with us and you know, they're still just as rupid as ever. <laughs> but uh, it's always nice to see the three girls together again um, in these removal videos.
Yeah, stand up for yourself, pigeon. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments let me know what you think. If you enjoy and appreciate independent content creators like yours truly and your favorite YouTube content creator, please consider liking and sharing. It really helps us be competitive with the bigger conglomerates that YouTube has decided to prioritize over little guys like myself. I really appreciate all the support that you've given me over the last year or so that's helped me stay successful on YouTube and be competitive, which makes it possible for me to be able to make this content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you on the next video.